Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Neil Joshi. Welcomes you to my series Learn Radiology with Dr. Neil Joshi. Today's topic is on radiophysics, that also in particular over the CT scan and the types of CT. CT scan when invented maybe around 1980 was totally different than what we are going to see today. What was the process in which they are evolved? What are the changes? from the first generation ct scan till today generation ct scan what were the types of ct scan they were produced now all these things we are going to see in a different lectures today's lecture is about these axial ct scan and helical ct scans there are multiple another lecture over the other topics covering the types of scan also and over the other applications of ct scan also now to start with are the disclosures we acknowledge with thanks all those from whom we have got this material this has come from our department which is going on for many years we use it for teaching purpose so also it has come from the net but we have confirmed that before downloading it is free of royalty again we thank them because it is only because of them i can deliver this lecture today now to understand in which generation ct scan has gone we have to understand how the ct scan was in a first generation now let's see first generation that is a single detector in that there was a parallel beam and the tube was moving you can see in the first diagram the tube is moving and detectors are catching the signals this was extremely slow each ct scan of head was taking more than 45 minutes then came the second generation in second generation ct scanner that is a fan beam shape and that is called as a translate rotate why because the tube is rotating and the detectors are also rotating now you can see in the diagram it is translate and rotate type now is the third generation which has made major revolution in ct scan the third generation ct scan has a fan shaped beam and it is rotated only you can see tube at one end and you can see detectors at another end this has major changed the ct machine speed and resolution and it, now we are the fourth generation in which the detectors are in array they are arranged along 360 degrees or 720 degrees that is uh, twice and the beam moves that is like a fan beam and the detectors are stationary now this is the fourth generation that is how it has come from the first generation to fourth generation and what we are seeing today are the third or fourth generation scans which are really fast now first city was called as emi mark 1 scanner the earliest version was 4.5 minutes for a single beam and was restricted to some regions only like head scan later version scanning the time was reduced by using two detectors so that two parallel sections are acquired that became a multi slice now resolution of this type was not as good so we called it a translate rotate scanners let's move ahead to the generations of ct scan now there came a second generation in second generation the design had multiple detectors the x ray source emits radiation over a large angle the efficiency of measuring projections was greatly improved the scanner is significantly more efficient and faster than the first generation so we call them as a translate rotate i have shown you with the help of diagram how they were and now you have to apply that diagram here so that you can understand it better third generation is had a larger array of detectors around 300 to 700 detectors they were usually circular then shorter scanning time was achieved because of this because only tube has to move not the detectors now pure rotational scanning motion could be used it would be possible to use higher power rotating anode x ray tubes and thus improve the scan speed in a thicker body parts now what does it mean if you have to take successive sections in any x ray tube you have to increase the capacity of ct tube and that can be achieved only by using a high dissipation in the tube number 1 number 2 
you have to use a high rotating anode so that the heat dissipation is further dissipated. So also tube has to be of higher generating capacity. Now these all were required before designing a third generation CT scanner. What we achieved with that? We could scan at a single breath, thick body part like chest, abdomen, etc. That become possible. Now, slam back translation motion was replaced with the smooth rotational motion. Higher output rotating anode X-ray tubes could be used and that greatly reduced a scanning time. X-ray tube is collimated to a wider X-ray beam that is a fan shape directed towards an arch shaped row of detectors. Now what we have done here? We have put more detectors for the image in that we could get a better quality image. Now different projections are obtained during rotation by pushing X-ray source by simply by sampling the detector at a very high rate. So this was achieved in this generation. Now let's go to the fourth generation where most of the scanners are. The stationary rotational ring and the rotational X-ray tube made a fourth generation different. Now reduced motion resulted in reduction in complexity, more sensitivity to the scatter radiation than the third generation. So you get better image quality. Now geometry required large number of detector and electronic channels that is the high cost because of the more detectors and more channel of electrons. However, here another change which took place was a solid state detector which were occupying a smaller space and they were better. Now as far detectors are concerned, I have covered it in some other lecture. Do visit our website and see that lecture we extensively covered. To achieve the same spatial resolution and dose efficiency that, as that of the third generation, we have got this system as the rotate stationary or rotate only geometry. Now let's go to the details of each type of CT scan. What was the axial scan? They were the earlier scans. And axial CT scan involves an acquisition of transitional profile with a rotating X-ray tube and a static table. And axial acquisition is generally performed with one full 360 rotation of the X-ray tube. But the enhanced temporal resolution, this may be reduced to a shorter than 180 plus degrees because of the fan shape acquisition. The rotational angle can be extended to for example 720 degrees acquisition to enhance the low contrast resolution by allowing a higher tube current that is MS. Now here we are showing it the table and a tube. If you are taking a 10 mm section, the table also moves 10 mm and after each rotation, the table stops and the rotation is complete. So it was taking more time. That was a more disadvantage. The complete examination is achieved by translation of the table step by step after each axial acquisition shoot. So each shoot table was advancing. If you are taking a 10 mm section, table was advancing by 10 mm at the end of each shoot. This is referred to as a step and shoot acquisition sequential or axial scanning. Usually the table transition is equal to the slice thickness so that sequence, subsequent axial sections can be reconstructed as contiguous axial sections because they were important for reconstruction but however reconstruction was not as good as that we are getting today. How we achieved it? Let us know in the lecture. It is an older technique used 20 to 30 years back. It is used in some centers even today and will refer to as the third generation scanning. This mode is used most often on the scanners with relatively narrow collimation angle, the Z axis. The technique is called a non volumetric axial scanning. When the relatively short detector being rotated around the patient, each axial scan covers only a relatively small coverage that is several maximum up to 10 mm per axial rotation. The patient table is then translated or moved in between the axial scans. So what was? Move patient, 
take a scan, stop the tube, again move the table. So, this was the technique. Each axial section is reconstructed and then the sub volume are combined to form a full volume covering the total event of the anatomy of interest that is suppose head scan or abdominal scan. The volume that can be reconstructed from each axial section is referred to as a slab. In the case of non-volumetric axial scanning to cover 760 mm with 10 mm slabs assuring no overlap between these slabs, we need 160 divided by 10 that is the 16 slabs. So, 16 time table will move, 60 time the tube will make rotation. That's why it was a lengthy process. The non-volumetric axial scanning is useful for those neuro patient who did not move during the scans. Under these conditions, we can still get very high quality images even with a relatively old scanning technique. So, that made a CT scan really popular. Now, let us come to helical scanning resolution, the speed, the axial resolution, the multi-planar reconstruction all were improved. Now, let us know how. On early scanners, only axial CT scans were possible, EMI scanners. In 1989, the CT acquisition with the rotating X-ray tube was combined with a moving table. This was called helical or spiral scanning. From the prospect of patient, the circular technology of the X-ray tube become a helical path. Now, here we are shown how it is. Now, you are seeing that the tube is continuously moving, patient is continuously moving. There is nothing like uh, tube is stopping and patient is stopping. That's why when we are getting a reconstruction, because it is volumetric data, we could get any type of uh, any type of reconstructions in any plane. Now the introduction of helical CT scan improved the performance of computed tomography considerably. Some advantages of the helical CTs were shorter examination scan time, more consistent CT images of the scanner volume since images can be reconstructed at any axis that is x, y, z. All the things were possible, coronar, axial as well as even the angular reconstructions were possible. Now, advantage of helical CT scans were introduction of artifacts such as windmill artifacts. We get one, we are were benefited with one, but we paid the cost in terms of some artifacts. Helical scanning allows for acquisition of a large volume of interest within one breath hold and it was a prerequisite for the development of high quality angiography where we have to get fast scanning as well as because the dye is going from the arteries very fast in that we have to make pictures. A modern CT scanner which are predominantly third generation CT scanners, there is an X-ray tube and X-ray detector mounted on a gantry straight across one another. These scanners have different scanning modes and best choice of the scanning mode depend on the clinician and task which is given to the scanner. Here we are seeing it how we can plan it either with the gap or without the gap or contiguous sections all that thing can be manipulated on the console with the help of computer. Now the table transition is generally expressed relative to the beam width in a single slice x-ray in single slice CD this equals the slice width the ratio of the table translation per 360 degrees tube rotation relative to the nominal beam width is the helical CT referred to as the pitch factor. So, this is the pitch 2 and pitch 1 you are seeing and the difference also is better to understand on diagrams than with the theoretical discussion. Now, here we are given a mathematical calculation also. Now, traditional helical scanning, spiral scanning, the primary difficulty was non volumetric axial scanning in axial scan. 
that when there is a patient motion between the acquisition so you do not get contiguous section there may be something gap or overlapping or movements that was not giving a good reconstruction in this case there can be significant motion between the axial slabs this is especially a problem when many slabs are needed like in abdomen or chest when at least 16 slabs are to cover over 160 mm so if patient moves in between if there is uh, any lag, there is a, a gap between the two sections, the reconstruction will not come good. In this case, there can be significant motion between the axial slabs. So that all we are overcoming with the help of helical scanning. Now, why helical scanning? Helical scanning is, it can cover full coverage as that of the axial scan have become default standard for imaging nowadays because the anatomy is better imaged with this. In the abdomen for instance, helical scanning can be better, it will be better with small motion in the abdomen because now the reasons helical scan is faster than non-polymetric axial scanning as the table does not need to stop or slow down and tube does not have to come back and go in a rotation here it is continuously rotating then helical scanning has continuous data usage so that the detector data is used in sliding window manner computer with the axial where neighboring slabs use separate data which is more susceptible to motion between the slabs so you will not get good continuous images in most cases, the table moves during the slab to achieve the helical acquisition, but there are some scanners in which the whole scanner, X-ray tube, that is a CT tube and detector, move on a rail while the patient is stationary. There are specially scanners for interventional settings. This is useful for in their use. For typical CT scanner, the table is moving during the scan as this is equivalent to the source and detector assembly moving in the other direction during the scanning. Now, in helical scanning, an important description of the acquisition is the helical pitch, which we have seen just now with the help of diagram. So, let's see it again. The pitch is defined as the speed that the table moves with respect to the length of the detector. With this, we are coming to the end of the lecture. So, we have to come to a conclusion and a take home message. We have seen helical CT scan and axial CT scan in this lecture. Now, we have seen the advantages, what they have got, uh, how the revolution from axial scan went to the helical scan, what were the drawbacks of axial scan which are covered in helical scan. Yeah, this lecture was to give you a gross idea about the technology. There are additional lectures which has covered this topic extensively. Do visit our website, do our, visit our YouTube channel. With that, I thank you for giving me your valuable time. Please visit our website and our YouTube channel. There are multiple lectures on multiple topics and not only that, there are a lot of different types in which radiology students can gain the knowledge. Thank you, goodbye and take care. See you in next video.